Well, I don't know if you smell any smoke, but I've been smelling smoke for quite some time now and finally figured out where the smoke's coming from. The big orb that sits on top of my shoulders. <laughs> so, usually what that indicates is that I've had a brainstorm. Uh, now, my brainstorms can get pretty dangerous sometimes, but I think I think this one's a pretty good one, and I want to put it out there. I'm going to do it. I just, um, implementations. I'm a little uh, kind of up in the air and still working on how to do this. But as you can tell by the title, uh, Basic Electronics. So what I'm thinking of doing is a basic electronics course. We're going to take you from the most basic thing, the electron, all the way up to ideally through RF communications. So this will be at least two parts. There may be other parts somewhere in the future. Um, now this course is not going to be something you're going to do in a weekend. This is going to require a year, possibly two, of your life. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to require an ungodly amount of time on my end. Hundreds and hundreds of hours to do this. But it's probably going to be at least 100, if not 200 hours of your time, too, to fully do this course. Um, I want to make this a very good course. Um, now, for starters right now, if you want to do electronics... Um, this blank paper is exactly the void that I'm trying to fill. There's two ways of learning electronics nowadays, pretty much. You've got, you buy a book, and you read it, or you go to college. Um, used to be, there used to be a, a large majority of your training was done here in the middle. The middle has kind of vanished over the last few decades. Um, used to be, like I say, nowadays you can read a book. So you can go buy a bunch of books on electronics, learn all the theory you want, but the problem is when you go to, to you have no practical experience doing anything. You can go to college. You can get a degree. Hell, you can get a doctorate. You can do four, two, four, six, eight years. <laughs> you know, you can, like I say, you can become a PhD in electronics. Um, but, you know, who's going to do that? If, you know, if you're doing that, you're going to be an electronics engineer. You're going to be designing stuff. You're not just going to be tinkering with radios. It used to be back in the day, there were lots of training courses you could get. Everybody had them. NRI, I mean, my God, RCA used to have training courses. Pretty much everybody was in the game back in the day. Um, when I grew up, when I went to high school, that's where I learned, I mean, from family members, because my grandfather and uncle had radio TV repair shop, but... You know, I, I took uh, electronics in Votech for two years in high school. Um, that course that I took is no longer provided to. You know, I go back down to Carroll County, I, you know, Votech Center. The electronics course hasn't been, they did away with that years ago. Because electronics, for the m most part, not all stuff, but for the most part, everything's disposable nowadays. It breaks, you just go buy a new one. Because it's so outdated by the time it breaks, you just go buy the new widget. But there's still a lot of stuff people want fixed. Now, in a case if you're familiar with watching my videos, it's usually radios. The older radios were just built better. That's why people want them. But there's, like I say, there's just really no training in the middle here where you get practical hands-on experience anymore. Um, now, there's a lot of people that do electronics training on YouTube, but it's little snippets on a specific subject or a component but there's really no full course. Um, and I want to try to fill that void. Um, so I think the way I'm going to do this is it'll be two sections. Now, like I said, I want to start out with the most basic, the electron. So you're going to have to learn some math, um, you know, very basic physics, the electron, how, you know, how an atom works, and, you know, the electron, how it's what happens to it in electronics. But we're going to start with the most basic and work our way up to, uh, like I say, ideally with RF communications. But I'm going to break it up into two major uh, components or areas, and the first one's going to be broken up into four separate courses. So the two main things are going to be, one is going to be basic electronics. Okay, so that'll be course one. Now that one's going to be a lot. It's going to take a lot of time to do this. Uh, part two. Now part two eventually in the future may actually have some other courses because this is actually, once you get done here, 
you can use this because you gotta remember there's lots of fields in electronics. You could work on radios, hell, washing machines, radar systems, the telecommunications. There's just all kinds of fields you can get into. So you know this course could be several different branches. I'm mainly going to focus at least for right now on one primary one, and that's going to be RF communications, RF combo. Um, so this one's going to cover the actual radios, receivers, and transmitters, or transceivers. But this is going to be our, this where we start at. This will be broken up mainly into four courses, I'm thinking. We'll have uh, probably course one is going to be DC electronics. Course two will be AC. Course three will be analog. And course four will be digital. Now in the first part you'll be introduced to most of your basic components, most of your basic electronics theory, um, you know, Ohm's Law. Um, same thing with AC, you'll learn a lot of your Kirchhoff's Law, a lot of your other, the, the core electronics, the formulas and whatnot, you're going to need to do electronics um, in these, these two. So this is going to be the math heavy part, not really heavy, and I'm going to explain, so don't get scared away at the beginning by, oh God, there's going to be math, I don't know it. I'm not a math expert. Now I do love math, but by no means am I a math professor. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professor of nothing. I have no degree. But don't get scared away by the math. I'm going to cover it in detail. So even if you don't even know what an exponent is, we're going to explain it. So as we go through the course, I want to make sure that this course um, is doable by everybody. As long as you understand the English language, you should be able to do this course basic math. You need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But I'll teach you the rest. So if you even don't know basic algebra, calculus, or trigonometry, because um, there's only actually little parts of that that we need, but I'll describe, I will go into training on how, on, on that, um, as we go through. So as it's needed, you'll learn those portions of math. Same thing with the electronics theory and the formulas and whatnot. Um, the analog is going to be mainly a lot of your semiconductors and analog signals. Um, so, you know, diodes, transistors, amplifiers, oscillators, stuff like that. And then when we get into the digital, kind of self-explanatory, digital, that's going to be mainly ICs. So, dealing with, and probably going to be mainly, I'll make this based mainly on uh, like 4000 or 7400 series, like TTL and CMOS stuff. But once you get done this, you can pretty much work on anything. Um, you'll have a basic understanding of all the core fundamental principles of electronics. Uh, like I said, I plan on doing a separate one on RF communications. May do some other ones in the future, because there's actually some things that I want to learn. Um, you know, I'd like to get in actually into a little bit into some, maybe some radar or microwave communications. So, you know, uh, this is going to be, this course here, when I do this one, the RF combo is going to be basically like AM receivers, uh, FM receivers. I'll probably do like a CB transceiver. Because, of course, if you watch my videos, you know I work on a lot of CB radios. So parts are readily available and cheap. Uh, so um, it'll probably be like a single channel crystal controlled, but it'll be a, a transceiver. It'll receive and transmit. Probably be like a quarter watt transmit power. But, uh, and then the same thing, we'll also do a sideband. So by the time you get done with this, you'll understand AM, FM, and not just FM. Also, I'm probably going to do narrowband FM as well. But you'll understand AM, FM, sideband communications. Um, and all the, the circuits that are used in that. So synthesizer circuits, PLL circuits, um, and, you know, and all the, all the intricacies of PLL circuits, phase detectors and all of that. Well, all that will be covered in this RF combo section. Um, so I know what I want to do, it's just the implementing it thing, so this video is, oh, I'm open to suggestions, so comments are open down below, feel free to leave comments um, and suggestions for me, because there's some things I'm not 100% settled on how I want to do them, um, one of the big ones being, uh, this is an online course, and not even, it's not, I don't even want to say online, it's a video course, 
it's pre-recorded, you watch it. And that's... So there's no interaction, I guess, is the best way to describe it. It's the same thing when you read a book. Now, when you go to school, you don't understand something. You just raise your hand, teacher, what's your question? You ask it, they answer it, or they can help you, you know, help guide you through. This is a pre. This is going to be a pre-recorded video. So it's not like I can stop in the middle of the training and answer your question. And I get so many emails now that I can't answer them. I can't even imagine how many many more people will be watching my videos. Actually, if this works out well, I could get swamped. I may just have to turn off YouTube notifications altogether, because I probably just won't be able to answer them anymore. It's just going to be ridiculous. So, the community may... And this is where I don't know. Um, I don't have a website. I don't do... Hell, the only thing I do online anymore nowadays uh, post videos with my phone or my tablet. Um... <laughs> You know, I, I download service manuals and data sheets. That's about it, people. I, I just, I, I have gotten to the point where I don't do the Internet anymore. If I don't have to go online, I don't. I have discovered it is a waste of your life. People waste so much of their time not getting anything. Because uh, most of the Internet nowadays is social media. Now, I guess YouTube's good might possibly be called social media, but I'm not using it for the social media purpose. I'm using it for educational purposes. But uh, yeah, the internet's just so derogatory nowadays. So I don't know about a lot of the services that are available. I may need to make a website where I have maybe a public forum where people can interact. So because uh, like I said, I, I'm not going to be able to answer all your questions, just not going to have the time. But you know, other people will be able to help. Um, even if we just do it in the YouTube comments, you know, so when you're taking, like, in the DC section, if we're doing series parallel and series parallel resistance, if you've got a question on that, you just ask it down in the YouTube comments, then somebody else that already understands, you know, that portion of the course, or under, just un has a better understanding of it than you, can chime in and help, maybe help you. Um, so, you know, group participation is going to help here. Uh, one of the things, though, I'm, I'm really not sure how to do is going to be, I don't want to call them tests, but, like, practice. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to call it tests or even exams. Kind of like practice examples, I guess. Because uh, it's just like the military. They're repetitive. When you, If you've been in the service, you know what I'm talking about. They could teach a rhinoceros to play the piano in the military. They just drive shit into your head repetitively, continuously, until you understand it. Um, so practice makes perfect. So we're going to need lots of practice examples or kind of like a test. I don't know how in the hell I'm going to do that. Um, for starters, I really don't want to be scribbling shit on a piece of paper, holding the paper up and go copy that down or answer that question. I'm going to almost need some way to have, like, text documents. And actually, I'm going to need to almost draw... I don't know. I'm going to need to look into this. Um, like, a electronics. Like I said, I don't do this kind of stuff, so I don't know. I'm, I know there's lots of graphics programs for drawing up schematics. I'll have to research that. See if there's, like, a freebie I can download. Um, so I can, like, draw a schematic picture that it can be placed in into a text document um, and then I can dump those files somewhere be it a, like I said I don't know really anything about cloud services or anything so for somewhere I can like dump the files or like if I have to get a website I would prefer not to this right here is going to take so much of my time hundreds of hours I'm I'm thinking probably to do this whole course it's just going to be this is going to be my life for a year probably two um, and actually, for you, if you do this course, I don't know, haven't started it yet, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be 100, possibly 200 hours, somewhere in there, at a minimum, of your life is going to be tied up in this course. If you want to complete it and you know, actually, truly understand electronics. Um, but yeah, there's going to be somewhere for me to, to give you documents. You know, so you could download like 5 or 10 pages of examples. You know, If you have... You know, if there's 10 resistors in a circuit, and it's a, you know, a series parallel combination, 
Um, you know what the voltage supply is, you know how much current's in the circuit, but there's a resistance value missing. Calculate the missing resistance value. But I need to be able to somehow upload those examples to where you can download them, print them out, and actually do them. So you can have practice because that's that's where you'll get your true understanding is practicing, practicing, practicing. That's what doesn't happen with the book stuff. It's just like when you go to, if you do, you know, the other end of the spectrum, when you go to school, that's why they have tests. You have to study and practice makes perfect. So we're, I'm, I'm going to want to implement something like that. So suggestions, I'm open. Any ideas? Um, the other thing, uh, this is not going to be a well, it is going to be a free course, so for you, it'll be free. It's not going to cost you anything to watch the videos. Just like now, you're watching this one, it doesn't cost you anything other than your time. But I want to make this a hands-on training experience. So unlike your book, or even like if you go on YouTube and watch videos right now on electronic, even my videos, current ones, if I'm trying to explain something, it's not actually hands-on for you, though. You're just looking, at, you're watching somebody else do it. You may learn some stuff doing it, you know, through that, but you're not going to get a good understanding of electronics. You really need to do hands-on to understand electronics properly, um, to really get it to sink in. So you know, so we're going to need equipment. Now I'm going to try to keep this as cheap and basic as simple. Uh, probably what I'll have to do is is come up with. I'm thinking for like these four courses is probably the way I'm going to do it. I'll have four parts lists. So there'll be a, if you want to do this DC, this first section of the basic electronics, we'll have a parts list for that, for the DC circuit. So it'll be resistors, capacitors, just basic off-the-shelf off components. Same thing for AC. Uh, we get into analog, there'll be some semiconductors, probably a transformer or two, not big, we're not talking big ones, little small ones, just for coupling and whatnot. Um, digital circuits, a handful of ICs. You know, all of this stuff is basically going to be readily available and cheap. It's not really going to cost you that much, um, but you are going to need some equipment. Now, I'm going to try to keep this one proto board based. Um, so, you're going to need a proto board. And I don't have one within arm's reach, but most of you probably know what I'm talking about. It's a little board with hundreds of little uh, terminals where you can just jumper components on, the bre the, one of the breadboards. Um, now I'm going to suggest, and I'll have to. I'll do some research, try and find a, like a good priced large one. But we're going to want a big one. You know, probably something the size of a sheet of paper, not one of those little tiny ones. Because um, some of this stuff, especially by the time we get up here, we're going to be building rather advanced circuits. There's going to be a lot of components. Um, so yeah, proto board. Um, of course, we're going to have to have a power source. So we're going to need a, a power supply. Um, now, if you watch my videos, you probably already have a power supply because current current subscribers probably are into CB radios or amateur radios. So you probably have a 13.8 volt, like an Astron power supply or something. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not going to work. <laughs> um, power supply. What we're going to need here is more of a laboratory power supply. So, actually, something like that. So something ideally, it's going to have to have variable voltage. That's going to be the one requirement. Adjustable current limit would be nice like that one, but not required. But uh, like I say, once I get the course started, I'll I start to put stuff together. I'll have like minimum requirements. You know, the power supply will have to do probably from like 0 to 20 volts at like an amp. But it's probably going to be more than enough because even for the RF combo section, the transceivers, the transmitter circuits are probably only going to be like quarter watt transmitters. So a one amp power supply would be more than enough. So yeah, it'd just be a cheapy. And all of this equipment can be used. That's one of the keys. You don't have to go out and spend a shitload of money on brand new equipment. A lot of you may already have some of it. But uh, yeah, eBay is a great place. So buy used. Save yourself money. Hell, that's how I got started in electronics. Buying used shit. <laughs> eBay is a fantastic source for that. Um, another thing we're going to need is a uh, meter or meters. I'm going to say a digital multimeter um, is going to be required with maybe an analog as a suggested piece. So 
You're going to have to have a digital because most of the course will be based on that, but there will be certain portions um, of this course where the analog meter will work better. Uh, it's one of the reasons I like this communications test set. It has digital meters in the bottom and analog meter movements at the top. Um, anybody that works on radios knows when you peak uh, like IF transformers, so when you're peaking a receiver or transmitter circuit, it's hard to watch a digital display. You're turning and turning and the numbers change, and ah, crap, they started to go the other way. It just watching an analog needle sweep up and back down, it's easier to find that peak. No difference here. So, and it's good to learn how to read an analog meter. Um, because especially if you're going to work on older stuff, a lot of times it may require you to use a vacuum tube voltmeter if you start working on old electronics. Um, they do have their advantages, and that's why there's still one on my bench. I've got several. I've got, God, boatloads actually of volt, vacuum tube voltmeters. But notice, analog meter has its advantages. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. An oscilloscope. Probably 30 megahertz would be fine because if we're going to be, if, now you'd honestly for this portion of the course probably like a 1 megahertz would be fine. But if you plan on doing the RF communications portion, um, if I do base that course on CBs, uh, you know, CB frequencies especially, we're going to be in a 27 megahertz range. So probably a 30 megahertz scope. Um, it's going to have to have at least two channels, which most scopes are nowadays. I have been for decades. <laughs> um, now, if you get one with a higher frequency, that's fine. Higher, you know, if it's 50, 100 megahertz, that's perfectly fine. More uh, is actually always better than less. Um, same thing with channels. If you can, if you get a four-channel scope, that's fine. But you own, we're only going to need two channels. Now, I say require two channels because we're going to need two channels because, especially in a lot of these circuits, we're going to be want to be monitoring an input signal and an output signal at the same time. So, if we change like an input signal, we want to see it changing, but we also want to see what happens, you know, correspondingly with an output signal. So, we're going to want two channels there. Now, it doesn't need to be fancy. It does not need to be a fancy digital scope like that. I mean, that was the maxed out version when I got that. Uh, it's got you know, it's four channel, 100 megahertz, uh, built in signal generator. It has the logic probe. If there was an option for that, I have it. I got every option that was available for that scope. It's you know, the Cadillac of that model. You don't need that. Actually, which be perfectly fine using something like that old antique over there. It's not really an antique. It's a classic, though, but an old analog CRT or cathode ray tube scope. Now, that one was actually kind of a high-end one. It's, you know, it's a four-channel, but it doesn't need to be that fancy. Like I say, just two-channel, 30 megahertz, you get by just fine. You can usually pick up scopes like that on eBay for, shoot, probably less than 100 bucks. Um, actually, I think I've, a lot of times you'll see scopes like that go for around 50 or 60 bucks. So, save money where you can. You don't need to invest a lot. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, probably going to need a signal generator. I mean, I could... We could build one, but honestly, it would just be better, probably, to buy one. Um... We're not really going to need that for this portion of the course, but for this portion of the course, in a lot of sections, we're going to have to have a signal generator. Um, but it doesn't need to be fancy. We're really only going to need to... It's only going to need to have, like, a maximum frequency, like 1 megahertz would be fine. So it doesn't need to be anything fancy. Uh, actually, Buddy, not long ago, if you're familiar with the radio shop, um, him and actually a bunch of other YouTubers, I got... The email from Banggood, I just ignored it because I didn't want to have, I didn't want to deal with it. But uh, a couple YouTubers, buddy over at the radio shop, being one of them, did sign up with Banggood. So they're sending him free stuff, free free equipment, no charge, no strings attached. Um, he just did in one of his videos. He did a I'm trying to remember what the title of it was. What 
basic RF troubleshooting or something like that, and he showed a, a, a signal generator they sent him. I think that thing was, what, 20 or 25 megahertz uh, signal generator? Now, it's going to need to be able to do this. The one we need for this course is going to need to do at least a square and a sine wave, of course. Um, but I think that one, I think that was like a 20 or 25 megahertz. And it had a built-in frequency counter to boot. I think it cost like 50 or 60 bucks. You'd have to go watch that video. Uh, but I think that was really cheap. That would be perfect. So that's what I say. We don't need fancy, high-end equipment. You don't need to go spending thousands. I'm trying to keep this cheap. So even people on a limited budget will be able to do this. Some of this stuff you may already have, because if you're already tinkering with electronics, you probably already have a digital multimeter. You may already have a proto board, and you may have a, a variable power supply. Uh, if you don't have a scope, like I say, the scope and the signal generator are going to be two of the more expensive items. But those can be had very cheap, used. Um, and actually, signal generators, like that one, that Chinese one uh, that got sent to Buddy, um, I think it's 50 60 bucks. It'd be perfectly fine for this course. Um, now, one thing I'm going to try to do with this course is, and I think that's where the books fail, and it's one thing you do get when you go to actually go to schools, troubleshooting, or diagnostics. You don't get that in a book. They teach you the fundamentals. This is a resistor, this is what a resistor does, this is how it reacts, same thing with all components, but it's, there's no, that's why we need equipment. We need to be able to, to go in and have faults and diagnose those faults and see what happens. Well, in, in a circuit, you know, it's got 40 components. If one resistor goes open, or if a capacitor's value changes, something happens in that circuit. How does that affect the rest of the circuit? And how do we troubleshoot to find that that's the faulty part? Um, so I want to, a lot of this course, when, we, when we're going through it, throughout the course, will, uh, um, or not will, I will try to cover uh, troubleshooting. So, you know, because that's what I do on a daily basis working on radios. Uh, pretty much for a living, that's what I do, is troubleshoot stuff. So, you know, we're not looking at it, this course as a design, from a design aspect. This course is based more for repair. So if you're interested in electronics, this will be a, hopefully this should be a good course for you. Uh, one last thing, um, I won't know until at least probably some of this gets done, and I can see how the course is going, and uh, honestly don't care about subscribers, but how many people actually watch the videos. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed when you watch one of my videos, for like, what, five seconds, you're forced to watch an ad at the beginning of the video, and then you can skip it. That's called Google AdSense. Um, I actually checked some time ago, I think last year, in the last 365 days, as of a, you know, like a week or two ago, I think I had made 850 or 880 some dollars over the last year in Google Ad revenue. Um, you know, definitely not making a living <laughs> on YouTube. That's for sure. Uh, you need to have you know probably well of hundreds of thousands of subscribers, if not a million, um, to be able to make a living off of YouTube. That ain't never going to happen with me, I can guarantee you. But, I, just talking to a few people, they said, if I do this course, and it turns out well and becomes popular, my subscribers, and like I, said, I really don't care about how many subscribers I have, but my views could go through the roof. Um, and if they do, my ad revenue is going to go up. So I could potentially could be making a considerable amount more with Google AdSense, the ad revenue. But I'm not going to keep it. Now, if I have to get a website, I'll use that to pay for that website. But I think what I would like to do is is just turn that money right back around and send it to some of you in the form of, like, a prize giveaway. Now, I'll probably, at the, like, the end of each one of these sections, I might have some type of little drawing... Um, or you win a multimeter or a component tester or something. Um, but I'd like to have a grand prize. Now, depending on how much ad revenue is generated, because like I say, this course is probably going to take a year or two. Don't know till I get in and see how long the videos 
you know, till I actually start filming this stuff and see how long, because I've never done this type of, of really an, an actual school type videos. I do a lot of educational videos, but not like this. So I really don't know how much time it's going to take to do it, but uh, if there's enough revenue generated, ideally what I would like to do is is give away a test bench. So probably what I'll do throughout this course, both of these sections, every couple of videos, or it's probably not going to be every video, but every couple of videos, you'll never know when it's going to happen. It's not, it's not going to be like every fifth, fifth video. It'll be a random video, and at a random point in that video. Could be at the beginning, could be in the middle, could be somewhere at the end. I'm just probably going to give out some arbitrary number or letter, like 3 or D. And you'll have to keep track of those. <coughs> Excuse me. And at the end of... We'll see what it looks like, how much revenue has been generated by the end of this, this course. It'll probably be at the end of this RF Camo course, though. Depends, like I say, how much ad revenue gets generated, actually. What I would like to give away is... Is... A brand new Rigel oscilloscope, brand new signal generator, brand new multimeter, probably a brand new power supply, again, Rigel. Um, probably a basic soldering station, but basically a test bench. Um, it's not going to be these exact models, but probably like the 50 megahertz version of that scope. Um the 60 megahertz version of that signal generator, which is also, by the way, it's also a frequency counter. Um, and it might even be that model meter. But uh, something like that. I'll, I'll have like a prize package. But, yeah, I'll just take the ad revenue money, just basically turn it back around, and it goes straight to, you know, straight to some lucky winner. So what I do is, when we get done the course, um, you take that, pri those, that code you've written down, so over the time of you taking this course, every time I have one of those little code letters or numbers, you'll write it down at the end when I say, okay, it's grand prize drawing time. Everybody that's interested, email me the code. If you send me the correct code, you'll get entered in, and I don't know, we may even make up some fancy digital circuit to do a random drawing. But uh, yeah, so one one person that ends up with that code, you know, with the correct code and enters will then randomly get drawn um, to win the prize package. My idea. Now, if don't get enough money to buy all brand new test equipment, I'll, even if I have to buy it out of my pocket, I'd still like to have some fancy giveaway at the end. If I have to buy a bunch of used, good working equipment to give away, actually, I wouldn't have to buy. I've got enough here <laughs> to honestly give away. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to have some kind of fancy giveaway at the end. You know, people that have put up with me for, like I say, potentially a hundred to two hundred plus hours. Um, but so, questions, comments, I'm all, I'm all ears. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bird brain idea, and I should just never come back again? Um, like I say, what do you think? A cloud service, or do I need to make a website with a forum where people can interact? Uh, I'm open to suggestions there. Um, so it's probably going to be a month or two at least until this actually starts. It's going to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts. Within a month or two, you're going to start getting videos on this series. Um, I just need to, to, like I say, work on parts list, figure out exactly what... I've got to write up course material or training material. Um, so I'm not just shooting off the cuff off the top of my head. I need to have written down course material for me to do for instruction. Get practice circuits and whatnot set up. But, uh, yeah, so ideas, I'm open. Let, let me have it, people. I'd, I'd be appreciated of uh, what you think. Um, like I say, good, bad idea and suggestions for the course, how to implement or you know, if I missed something. So let me know.